safe um, ways of doing that. So I have um, a little, some little notes because I have a tendency, we started at 11.35, so we should be done at 12.35-ish. And um, I have a tendency to go off on things and get unfocused and get so passionate about things that I could talk about just one of these things for an hour. So I wanna make sure that um, we leave time and be respectful of your time today. So we are gonna be talking about the origin of perfumes. We're gonna be talking about organic compounds. We're gonna be talking about um, even how to create your own perfume if you desire to do so. So some of you, I think we had 10 bags out there for you to pick up, um, sample bags and six of them are gone. So some of you got bags and some of you didn't. Just to let for you to know, these bags will be out there till Friday. So if you didn't get one, you can pick it up after the class. But I do wanna show you what was in your bag. We have a, um, a handout, a front and back handout that I'm gonna be speaking from that has most of the information we'll be talking about. The front of the handout um, is going to be more about the principles of perfume and the back will be more about the practical um, aspects of perfume and how to make them and things. So that's an important one. I also have in this little baggie, your uh, four samples that we're gonna be using today, cedarwood, lavender, fractionated coconut oil, and orange. Those are your little samples. I have a um, doTERRA healthy can be simple little guy. And on the back, I put about those four different samples that you can read about and how to use them. There's my business card, my little card with all my information you'll need. And then last but not least, I put in a um, doTERRA shampoo and conditioner for you. And you can keep it for yourself or gift it to that special Mother's Day gift, or but it's um, from our spa collection. And I promise you, this is just like taking a spa in your shower. And you only need a little bit, so this will last you for a couple of shampoos. So that's what you need in your bag. And then some cotton organic pads that we're going to be doing a little experiment with. So we've got a lot going on today. Just a little bit real quick to know why I'm even here. I've been a, um, a doTERRA, a book doTERRA and using the products and sharing them for four years. In fact, this month is my anniversary with doTERRA, but I've always been geared towards more of a natural choices, natural alternatives, lifestyle. And preparing for this, I thought about something. I just did a green clean class uh, recently and now this perfumes class on Zoom, this is my second Zoom, y'all. But I will say that um, doTERRA has made it a lot easier to, to um, make that journey easier of going more a uh, more natural approach. Um, and so that's why um, those are the ones I use and those are the ones I'll be talking about today. Um, they're the ones I've researched extensively and I use them because of their, and share them because of, I'm confident in that, their purity, their efficacy, how they are, are um, made, how they treat their growers um, across the world, how they give back to the world from their Healing Hands organization. So there are many reasons why I do that. And I just love teaching. I, I've, um, I taught for many, many, many years, over 30 years, and as a school counselor. So I've always been in the heart business of giving back, and um, that's what I love doing with these classes. So let's keep going. I, I looked up the origin uh, of the perfumes, and they go back thousands and thousands of years, thousands of years. And the earliest uh, use of perfumes were by the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians. And they used them in religious ceremonies mainly, but also they were very um, used as elite wealthy status. And they were the first ones to use perfume as their own, um, for their own pleasure. They would put it on decorative things in their homes to smell or the bodies. And so it was used for hygiene. And so the ancient Egyptians and the early Arabs and the Greeks all 
originated cre created perfume. I thought this was interesting by like burning incense and herbs and um, such as frankincense and myrrh, which I have on my table today. Uh, so the perfume in Latin is through smoke and that's why they would get the fragrances from the burning of the incense. So it was supposed to be smokes and it was um, dedicated to the gods. So there was a lot of ceremonial reasons. As, as time move, has moved on, uh, more exotic uh, herbs and spices would be ground up and mixed with oils to create um, the first early perfumes that people could wear as a fragrance. So plants and flowers and herbs and essential oils have been used throughout history, throughout all, throughout all the world for all, you know, both medicinal and therapeutic and cosmetic reasons. And they were more valued than gold. In the Bible, they're essential oils as perfumes and they're called different things, odors and sweet savors. They were listed over 500 times. And I will tell you, that's one of my favorite classes to teach is the oils of the Bible, to hear about these beautiful oils that were used. Uh, but I found some fun facts before I leave this a part of the um, talk today. The interesting facts that uh, in ancient times, they would wear aromatic herbs and plants were made into like a plastic waxy cone that was worn on their heads. And as their bodies um, heated up, they would naturally, those cones would melt and the fragrance would, um, you know, would eventually come out and spread uh, steadily. So they loved that. They wore small little bottles under their wigs, which I don't know how they did that. They wore perfume gloves. And um, this one article said how they were burning incense on their wigs, but they said it probably wasn't true because it didn't sound too safe. So today we have a lot easier ways of making pure fumes than with these beautiful bottles in front of me. So if you go to your sheet, it says perfumes can be intoxicating, seductive, and evoke a certain emotions or memories. And I think most of you have experienced that. Maybe you smell the rose and you think of your grandmother's rose garden or maybe um, homemade pie or cookies or cooking. It takes you to a childhood memory in the kitchen with your mom or your grandma. I know with me, a lot of my uh, memories are evoked by the smells of food because that's how my mama um, showed her love through cooking. So I just have a lot of memories he evoked it and, and evoked emotions from, from food. Um, it could be a certain perfume that someone wore. This, I gave myself a chuckle on this one because one that came to mind was my grandfather. He was a very sharp dresser and a very cool dude. And he would wear, uh, I guess, uh, aftershave lotion. Like, uh, what's that aftershave? I have Chris in here with me. Uh, it's an old, old spice. Old spice. Yeah, old spice. And, he would smell so good. And I just remember that smell. So if I smell Old Spice anywhere, I think of grandpa. The reason that happens, this is, this is important for, to, I, I just learned this four years ago, is that when you smell something, the aroma goes up into the olfactory system, the olfactory bulb, which is located in the Olympic system. So if you take your two fingers and put it right there, that behind that is your Olympic system. And that within that limbic system, which your limbic system does like, um, uh, is responsible for your blood pressure and your hormones and your body temperature, so many things. But in there is the amygdala. And the amygdala is the emotional seat of the brain. It is really, it processes those emotions. The other part of that, of the brain that triggers those memories, responsible memories are the hippocampus. So that's all there in the brain. So you smell, it hits that, and it triggers those strong emotions and memories. So it's how our, how our brains are wired to have these emotions and memories evoked. I, I just love that part of that. And I, I geek out over the science part. So that's a happy, happy um, side effect to the way our brains are wired to these smells. So as we go on, just I'm going to go on now to your sheet. 
However, there is a dark side of the perfume industry that a lot of us, I know I didn't know. To protect trade secrets, commercial perfume manufacturers are permitted to withhold and, uh, and disclose, disclose certain ingredients. And those can be potentially hazardous and be petrochemicals. One, um, Chris, the rest of you that I uh, researched was phthalates and phthalates, and they are what's made of plastic. They're the, they're the things that the, the chemicals that make plastic flexible, that make and keep it flexible. So we're putting that on our skin again, as I talked about at the beginning, and going into our bodies. So you have to be real careful. So this part right here says, are you sensitive to fragrances? The average commercial produced fragrance contains 14 chemicals, which can cause things such as allergies and sensitivity and headaches and skin reactions, nauseousness. So it's no wonder that many of us are sensitive. I know that I am, and I had a perfect example. I got a Sunday paper and inside the Sunday paper for Mother's Day was a little perfume supplement that have all the different perfumes. And all this, I mean, I could smell it. I had to like take it outside immediately. My, my nose gets stopped up usually, my eyes will water. So I have an immediate reaction. And some of those could be long standing of what we put on our bodies and in our bodies. And it can be from a simple aromatic exposure or physical exposure that can compound the toxins and the accumulate in our body. And that's called toxic load. And on that toxic load, our bodies are pretty good about filtering through those toxic loads, but they can build up because why? Toxins are all around us. Our hair care products and our air, uh, our cleaning products, what we eat, we're totally surrounded every day by those. So one of the things to lessen that toxic load, you guys, is by making our own products, like our own perfumes that we're gonna talk, you know, show today how to do that. So these, what's, what's in these things are really important to know. And many can be classified as carcinogens, hormone disruptors. And I had no idea about this song. I mean, I'm learning as y'all are learning about this. Um, they can lead to sperm, dam sperm damage in men. And when worn by pregnant mothers can lead to abnormal reproductive development and male fetuses. So that is from uh, EWG, which is Envir Environmental Working Group. I really highly encourage you, if you wanna know more about these things, they just, it's a wonderful group. Um, they came up with the, fifth, the 12 dirty dozen produce lists and 15 clean produce lists. So you can research this if um, you wanna learn more about it. And they took that from EWG, Not Sexy. I think it's called Not So Sexy. And they have another one called Skin Deep. Uh, that you can uh, research through them. So do your research. It's not like I'm not here to scare you or anything like that. I'm just here to make an awareness and for you to know. Okay, I'm skipping a lot, guys. So now we go down to um, the common organic components of perfumes. And as you can see, the bark and the flowers and the fruits and the leaves and the resin and the roots and the seeds in the woods. And then next to that, I love the way this handout does this, is it lists what those are. And I will say that all of those organic components of perfumes, I have many of those in my essential oils here and in my stash at home. So what are essential oils? Well, again, we've all experienced them if you um, smelled a rose or a peppermint leaf. The undersign is that underside of the leaf is that little oily stuff. That's that's essential oils in the peppermint. Walk through some pine trees and smell those beautiful pine trees. You're experiencing essential oils. They're highly concentrated. 
In fact, they're 50 to 70 times more powerful than herbs. So they're quite strong. So less is always more with using essential oils. They're volatile, they're aromatic compounds and they're found in plants in nature. Um, they are steam distilled or cold pressed extraction. So where we get our oils and the oils, the essential oils that we use are very important. They're not all created equal because essential oils if you're not doing your research on them, can be filled with synthetics. So you're defeating your whole purpose about putting a pure therapeutic natural product on your body. They have key productive, reproductive, protective and regenerative purposes, as your sheet says, um, from plants from which they're extracted. In other words, how they protect the plants, they can protect our bodies. They're the immune system of the plants and they can do the same thing for us. They have powerful safe benefits. 28 cups of peppermint tea equals one drop of peppermint oil. So very powerful. They are safe and effective and affordable. In fact, a large bottle like this, a, a 15 ml bottle has 250 drops. A roller ball like this has 170, and a smaller 5 ml has 83. And one drop will service our bodies, our whole entire bodies, so you don't need a lot. But what I love about this perfume is that while you're smelling fantastic, fabulous as a perfume, you also are getting all the benefits physically and emotionally and mentally from these um, products, these essential oils. So I love my perfumes, definitely. Is everybody doing okay? I can't see your faces to so know that you're doing okay. Chris, am I going too fast to write on? Okay, mm -hmm. to Sam, we're moving at a good pace. So this leads us to the, I would call it the meat of our, um, of our, our little presentation today, our little ga oil, oil gathering. And that's the aromatic profiles of fragrances. I probably got hooked on this and researched it so I'm not kidding, 10, 12, 14 hours. But to me, it's, it's interesting. It says, I'm at the bottom here, and it says your sense of smell is predominantly based on emotions. Well, you guys already know that. Why? It's wired to the brain. And most people tend to prefer one or two of these aromatic profiles and several variations contained within those profiles. So the main profiles are floral, oriental, and some of you may be taking notes, but it's right here, woody and fresh. And next to them, they talk about the essential oils and what they blend well with. Of course, I won't read all of that to you. It's right there for you. But what I do want to point out is this wheel on your handout. As you notice in the middle, there is a floral, oriental, woody, and fresh. Those are the four main notes or family profiles. And then they have the subfamilies. It's all color coordinated of those four main profiles. This wheel is called the fragrance wheel. And it, this particular one you have in front of you and that you can, you've picked up or you can pick up till Friday at the library or uh, created by Michael oh, Edwards. Amazing. He created this fragrance wheel in 1983 and it's, he's updated it uh, uh, several times since then. And as you can see, it has the 14 different aromatic profiles and the four main notes. He also has a reference guide that goes with this that explains it a lot more. But I did look into this wheel because it's so important for our perfumes. And it is like the color wheel. Remember the color wheel from our art classes? They're placed, the colors are placed according to the relationships to one another. 
one color blends well into the next, the opposite colors on that color wheel would clash. Well, the fragrance rule is gonna work the same way. And so it's a great tool to determine the kinds of scents you're drawn to. So I'm gonna teach you a little bit more how to use the wheel, all right? Is everybody with me? Okay, here we go. Okay, I got a thumbs up. Thank you, Nami. The first technique is the neighbor fragrance technique. And those are those side-to-side -side fragrance families. And so they're gonna all, like a soft oriental, oriental, they're gonna be side-by-side. -side, and they're, those are going to blend pretty well together, really well together, in fact. The opposite fragrance technique is that the subfamily directly opposite will pair well. So example of that would be the soft oriental. And look over here, the soft oriental and citrus. They're directly opposite of one another. So that would be another um, fragrances that would blend well and pair well together. And the third one was called the triangle fragrance technique. And so you would choose three of the subfamilies that make a triangle. And those will also complement each other. So if you pick the floral, oriental was your fragrance. It's at the top there, the top pink one on your wheel. And you could find a fragrance that also contains, go to a triangle, a water, aquatic water note, or a woody note. So you make a triangle. And so those would pair well. But I will tell you, it, some of this comes to intuition. Like I've gotten with my intuition with the oils, that sometimes that oil will just speak to me. Well, it doesn't go, hey, Mary, how are you today? But it will say the fragrance or what I'm needing that day or how I, I choose to smell that day will just intuitively speak to me. So it's more of an art than a science, but it is nice to have this will to help us when we're looking at fragrances or you're picking out a fragrance that's already pre-made for you. We're doing really good, you guys, on time. So if you turn over, I would say, I want to say, are there any questions about that? But I know y'all can't ask, y'all are on uh, to ask me questions. But, I'm, but you have my contact information if you do. So I think that, um, the wheel just makes it easier to mix and match uh, perfect blends for fragrances. Chris, do you have any questions that I you would think to ask on that? Okay. So now we're gonna skip making our own perfume at the top and we're gonna go to the bottom part, which is the composition. The chemical composition of perfumes. And this is taken from, think of an old a pyramid, an old factory pyramid. And if you look at the pyramid, the very top part is called the top notes. The middle part of the pyramid is called the middle notes and the bottom part is called the base notes. So perfumes are mostly comprised of top notes, middle notes and base notes. So in addition to the fragrance will, we have this olfactory pyramid to help us. Um, essential oils can fall within one note, between the notes, or within two notes. So you just don't say, okay. And that's how I like to have things so with such clarity that, okay, lavender is a middle note, that's it. No, it can also be a top note. So I just want you to be aware of that when you're looking at this, some of the oils might fall in between or within the two notes or just be one note. It's described notes. I researched that, why they call them notes. It's they're using an analogy of, of musical scales. Um, and I saw this quote and I love this. It's like a musical composition. Uh, perfume is made of the singular notes that harmonize together to create an aromatic symphony. I love that. So the notes are based on how quickly the essential oils evaporate, evaporate or the 
ingredients in a perfume, and in this case, we're using essential oils, would evaporate. Let's start with top notes, okay? And it's all there in front of you, so you, you can add notes to it if you choose, but it's really right there for you. Top notes are those notes that are first to evaporate around 30 minutes or so. And are therefore, they're the first ones we tend to smell. So as I'm smelling a, a perfume, or once we make these perfumes, our top notes are the ones that are gonna get us excited. They're like, wow, I like that. But they evaporate very quickly. They usually have a light and an airy profile. So I want you guys to think about fruity oils, citrus oils, fresh and bright are usually your top notes. And again, this handout was a perfect handout for us today because it actually lists some of the essential oils there from basil, to eucalyptus, to cinnamon, to grapefruit, uh, melaleuca, which is tea tree oil, peppermint, spearmint, um, neroli, which comes from the orange tree, and orange. I chose the wild orange. So in your bag, you have wild orange. You can take that wild orange and open it up right now if you choose to do so. If you have a... a and just take a, inhale that wild orange and you know what it smells like. And we're gonna do a little experiment with this in just a second. But I wanted you to smell the wild orange. That's gonna be our top note choice. So get it ready to go. Our middle notes or called, please get it ready to go. Our middle notes are the act of the second longest lasting. They're going to last from like one to three hours. And then those are like your heart notes, your main notes. And they're usually soft and often serve to, to round out that blend. I want you to think here of florals, grass, grassy grasses herbals, oils, and some examples are black pepper and cardamom, and you can read those, cypress, fennel, geranium, margarine, there's neroli again, see, it falls into two, rose and rosemary, ylang ylang, which is so beautiful. And off of that list, I chose lavender which is a floral oil. So we have wild orange, which is a citrus oil. We have lavender, which is a floral oil. I also want you to note something interesting. With those examples, I was like, how does I use, how do I use my fragrance oil? And I thought, aha, some of those within those are also um, oriental and spicy and you have the herbs and the florals. So I kind of use both in choosing this. I used the suggestions on what blends well on this side. And I also use the back side of my notes, how they evaporate. So combine those, I use both tools to come up with the ones I wanted to share with you today. Does that make sense? It does, okay. The last note of our symphony, our aromatic symphony we're building today, is the base notes. And those are active the longest in the perfume. They can last for several hours, several hours or days. The base notes are going to add that depth. And they're going to add that staying power to the blend. In fact, when we put perfume on, and you still, or a essential oil, that base note will remain on your clothing. So you'll hang it in your closet and you think you're gonna wear it another day and you take it off and you go, oh, that smells like 
what I had on the other day, it's still on your clothing. So those are the oils that are, are, are woody and earthy, those type of oils. They're just very grounding. And I will say for my own personal profile, because they said on the front, do you recall them? It's saying that we are really drawn to one or two profiles. Mine are definitely the earthy, the woody, which by the way, are the most popular male colognes are the woody, the woody oriental. So I'm really drawn that way. So in doing this, I hope you find out what you're drawn to. Is it those woodiness, that earthy of the bass notes that you're using? Or is it more the floral, the more oriental? Chris, do you doing this? Are you thinking of one that you're more drawn to, the florals or the? Um, probably the florals. The bass notes are probably my least favorite. See, and that's what makes it special. None of us are going to be, thank you, Chris, for sharing. None of us are going to be the same. And guess what? None of them are going to smell the same on us because of our own body composition and chemical, right? So I digress. Let's get back, Mary. I just wanted you to know that um, I'm really, I'm really um, drawn to those earthy tones of the bass notes. So these are like amber and cassia, which is an oriental spicy oil. It's the cousin to cinnamon. I love the way cassia smells. Clary sage and clove and frankincense and jasmine. Chris and I were smelling jasmine earlier. Um, patchouli. Uh, here's Rose again, and Rose was in the middle note. Uh, vanilla, uh, which is not an oil, it's a, you would use a vanilla abstract. Vetiver, Elang Elang. And on this one, get her on out of your bag. I chose, well, cedar. Cedarwood. <laughs> It's jumping cedarwood. It's hopping today. Cedarwood. Now, we're going to do something with these that I did at home, and that's why you have the cotton pads. I want you to take your, you ready for an experiment? I want you to take your wild orange, and I want you to, I won't use these because I'm going to get these to Nami, but you can put those wild orange and drip it, a drop, on one of the cotton pads. Or, or two or three. <laughs> it's okay. And if you're having a hard time coming out of there, did you have a hard time getting it out? A little bit, yeah. Okay, you just, you just hit it on the bottom okay. with these little drams, okay? Because I did put a, a, a little stopper thing in there for you. So that is on your first, your top note is on your first cotton pad. You take a whiff of that. You can even take your wild orange and put a drop, a drop in your hand. Got several drops there and rub it together and smell. Because why? Wild orange is very uplifting. It helps us to focus and concentrate. It's energizing. And by now, some of you might need a little <laughs> energy and uplifting refreshing from my class. It's a great cleanser and purifier, so it's good for cleaning around the house. And again, you can put a drop in your hand. You just take a smell, it's very uplifting, and rub your hands together. And this is your own diffuser that's always with you. It's a great way. You can add 10 drops to a spray bottle and add to water in a spray bottle or a cleanser at home. The bottle of orange is a happy oil. I call it happiness in a bottle. So with this experiment, you're going to leave this out and come back in a couple of hours. And you may notice that the wild orange is starting to calm down and evaporate. The second pad, we're going to put our middle note. So we're going to take a lavender and we're going to Put it on the same amount of drops you put on the first one, a drop or two. 
and take a smell of the lavender. Mm, that smells so good. Lavender is very, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it as you smell it. And you can even put a drop with a wall of orange in your hand and rub it and have orange and lavender blends very well together. Lavender is calming and relaxing, okay? It, to the mind and to the skin. I call lavender, and heard it's been called the Swiss army knife of essential oils. It's a universal oil. It can be used for so many things, reducing stress and anxiety. It helps us, I put on the bottom of my feet at night, um, a massage to sleep well, restless sleep. It helps with burns and sunburns and allergies, seasonal allergies and hay fever, bug bites, hives. It's a natural antihistamine, y'all. So it's gonna help with all those kind of things. And on the burns, the other night I got a burn um, from a microwave dish, you know, like, what do you call that? A, a burn, <laughs> not a burn, <laughs> again, a vapor burn, I don't know. But I don't know. From the microwave, but, oh, it's, and I put some lavender on, it just soothes it. So, it's just a great oil. You can diffuse it at bedtime. If you don't have diffuser, put it on a cotton ball and just put the cotton ball um, by your bed or put some, um, rub it on your pillowcase, spray it on your pillows. I said the bottoms of my feet are my favorite place. Put it on your, um, on your pulse points for a perfume. So lavender is a great one to use. And I like that these are separate for y'all because you can use them all separately or you can put them together. And I'll tell you about that in a second. Okay, you ready for our base note? If I ready, you ready? Chris? Yep, yep. The base note is cedar wood that we're using. So take your third cotton ball, last one, and there's, and that is cedar wood. And it smells so good. Mm. I love, again, I'm drawn to those kind of things, to the, uh, the, the woodsy oils. So while you are looking at that, take, breathing in that and taking a whiff of that, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about cedar wood. It has a um, warm and earthy smell, we know that. It is a, it's a deep and strong and connecting oil. So when we're feeling isolated or feeling lonely, it's a good oil to feel connected. And that's what I love about the essential oils is they don't have, just have physical benefits. They have every single one of them have an emotional benefit. Cedar wood is great for sleep. Lavender and cedar wood on the bottoms of your feet at night, you are gonna sleep and snooze. It is one, those are both wonderful combined with lavender. It has um, clarifying properties. So it's really good to put like a drop in your facial toner or your moisturizer and put it on like a blemish at night. Uh, it is, oh, forgot all about this. It's a natural um, insect repellent. So you can put it on a cotton ball and you know how, I, I don't give this Chris, but you would put like cedar wood, like, um, like a cedar wood chest protector things or cedar wood. I used yeah, to have like a, yeah, a yeah, thing of cedar wood yeah. to put in my closet. Yeah. Well, you just put cedar wood, a drop or two on a cotton ball and put it in your closet to keep those moths at bay. So it has many, as all the oils, many purposes. It's great to, uh, before you exercise to massage it. Um, on your chest for vitality. It is a sensitive oil, so people with sensitivity, that's why we use a carrier oil. That's why I have, um, you see FCO on that. That's fractionated uh, coconut oil, a liquid coconut oil. So I gave you a little carrier oil in there also to have. And the way I do that is I just put a drop on my hand a drop of carrier oil blended and we just rub it on my chest or on my feet for sleep. Now, do all of these need to have a carrier oil? With okay, good question. 
So the oils come in th three different ways. An N means neat, and you can use a, an oil that's neat, N-E-A-T, without any issues. Or, I'm sorry, uh, without a carrier oil. The S for sensitive would be like cedar wood, and a carrier oil would be helpful with that if you're sensitive. Then the third way the oils are, are um, categorized is a D for, uh, for dilute. And those would be your hot oils. They're not like hot temperature, but hot to the skin. And that would be like cinnamon and cassia and oregano. So you definitely would dilute those. So our bodies are different. My sister can use like a sensitive oil. She has tough skin, I guess, <laughs> in a lot of ways. But she, her, the oils she can use without a carrier. I use a carrier oil on almost everything. Why? It's because um, it helps absorption. It covers more of an area of the skin and helps, uh, as I said, the absorption of the oil. So that was a very good question. You have to know, you know, your oils. And the good thing about doTERRA is it will have that information provided to you for each oil, so you know that. So, but a carrier oil is always a, a safe way to use the oils, especially for children, um, us that are, are of more advanced ages, aging. It's just a, a good way to get to use your oils. So, thanks for that question. I wish the rest of you could ask questions um, to be in, in person doing that. So what we're gonna do is leave these out and in, in an hour or two or just later on today, you're gonna smell each one of them and notice if the oils are starting to evaporate. The top oil, the wild orange. What's the lavender smelling like in a couple hours? The cedar wood in a couple hours. And then tonight before, or maybe at dinner time, smell them again, three or four hours. And then tonight before bed, smell them. I did this and what I noticed the most, where I noticed the most difference was that even a couple of days later. And I had mine, I brought these with me and I can still smell the cedar wood but the others are almost totally gone. So did the experiment work? Yes. So I just wanted y'all to actually kind of have a hands-on or a actual doing of the um, top, middle, and base notes to understand what we're talking about, how they evaporate. And they all use together to make a really nice blend when you bring those top notes, middle notes, and base notes. But I will say on this tray, Here's the top notes, middle notes, and base notes I made. And these are some by doTERRA that are already pre-made. They have an emotional line that have um, the oils listed on the side, and they're already pre-diluted with fractionated coconut oil. And when I looked at those, I was like, okay, I created a, an oil monster because I'm like, okay, that's a top note, that's a little note, it's a base note. That's that aromatic profile, it all comes together. But I use just a single oil many times, like um, an aroli or a rose, or if I'm feeling um, like energy, I'll use wild orange as my perfume if I'm wanting wild, you know, energy. And they also have some pre-blended um, oils that are blended together. The synergy, uh, work, they all work together synergenically to produce the best benefits and beautiful smells. So there's some are pre-made and I use those, but now today we're going to have to make some of our own, which leads us to the next part, our recipe. Any questions over that bottom top middle base notes? And again, y'all can reach out to me if you have more questions, you have your handout um, to help you. So- Can I ask a question about the fractionated coconut oil? Yes. Is it organic? Yes. And it's it, all it, natural. Who's asking that, Catherine? Yes. Was yes, that you, Nami? Okay. Yes. And uh, fractionated coconut oils has been through a process. 
it's uh it's not i put that on the back of y'all's sheet here and it's used for dilution it's unscented colorless and non-staining you can use some of the other oils but it might they might have a um an odor to them and so that's why i like fractionated coconut oil it comes like this from doTERRA and one of these bottles will last me forever and ever but you can get it on amazon but that's a good question you want to make sure it's organic and how it's made and that sort of thing because again like we were saying earlier, you're defeating your whole purpose, right, Nami? So, yes, this is a bottle of fractionated coconut oil of doTERRA. Thank you. So, you're welcome. So, I I have a, a 10 milliliter touch roller, and I have lavender, wild orange, and cedar wood. These little stickers on them, so I'll know what I put in my, in my bottle. And I'm going to use that today to demonstrate to you um, how to make one of these. I will say that I made this in a little, I thought about this to y'all. I made this pre-up, pre-up, <laughs> pre-made pre -made it up uh, in one of these little dram bottles. And this was cedar, lavender, cedar wood, lavender, wild orange about two weeks ago. And it smells so good. That I've been using it as my own perfume. Um, and Chris smelled it earlier and I, she says, I want to come to that class. That smells so good. And it is, it's a, it's a way you can use what I gave you as a perfume, even without the roller. You could take your fractionated coconut oil, your little bottle, and you could add a few drops in there and just put it on um, as your perfume. So you have all the ingredients right there to make a, a beautiful perfume. Again, what I like, you may not like, but these are just oils that I think will work good for most of us. So here we go. You're gonna need six to, I'm gonna go right on the DIY part, six to 10. Oh, that smells so good, y'all. I wish I could smell it. It just smells so good, that, that perfume. And, and the longer it's, it has sat and the time to kind of mesh those, those together, those oils, it, it just keeps smelling better and better. But guess what I smelled then? I smell a little bit of cedar wood. Yeah. So that's interesting how that's come out. So I keep saying so a lot. I, I don't know. The ingredients, six to 10 drops of essential oil you're going to need. Two teaspoons carrier oil, fractionated coconut, which we have, sweet almond, jojoba, um, olive oil even, but grapeseed oil, those type of things as a carrier oil, or two teaspoons of 70% alcohol vodka. I have a disclaimer here, that's for the bottle. That would be a fun get together also to make, what, what do you make vodka with? Uh, Look, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> she's like anything. We could have a screwdrivers and an oil party, you guys. And you would need a 10 milliliter roller bottle or a fine mist. So you can also make it into a mist like this. Your perfume. To see if you like the scent, I like this tip. Make a small sample first. And if you like it, make a larger batch like this. You can always add more oils to the mixture later. That's true. So using a 10 milliliter bottle, we're gonna add approximately six to 10 drops of essential oils. Remember less is more. So you really would need more than 10. Getting the correct proportions is key to creating your own custom perfume blend. For beginners, we recommend using the recipe, recipe below or when creating the custom blend, use the suggested blend ratio as a starting point. So that is your starting point, And that's what we're going to do today. You're going to take three drops. And some of you may have these. You can get these off the doTERRA back in the back office. I think it's under tools or Amazon or 
These are easy, easily to, uh, able to get. And you're going to put three drops, one, two, three, just like that, of wild orange. Then I'm going to add my middle notes of my lavenders. One, two drops of lavender. If you get an extra drop, that's okay. And then I'm going to put in my base note. I'm just going directly by the directions on this sheet. Come on. There we go. I got an extra cedar wood. And then you're going to take your cured oil, and we're using fractionated coconut oil. I'm going to show you a little trick. This is how the bottle comes, but just for a couple of dollars, you can order this. Oh, these are in the doTERRA back off uh, in the tools, but it's so much easier to fill your bottles with this. So I'm going to add the rest. I'm going to fill it up with my carrier oil. We're still doing good on time. So here we go. I'm filling her up. That's kind of mesmerizing. And then I'm going to put on the cap, that lid, and I'm going to show you a little trick. This is also in the doTERRA, can y'all see that? The doTERRA back office. My hand, I don't have the strongest of fingers, and so this is able to get things off and put things on. I'm not sure what you call that. So I'm going to use this to push my can y'all see that? I'm going to use that to push that. Whoa, see how nice that went down? Because I'd still be going e -e 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 if I didn't have that. So one of these, if you're going to be making your own stuff or using essential oils, this has been my angel on earth to help me out. So I'm going to put the lid on, attach cap, and shake well. And that's it, you guys. That is a pure fume using these beautiful gifts of the earth and making them into a natural, pure product that not only smells good, but remember, I'm getting a calming effect. I'm getting a relaxing effect. I'm getting uplifted. I'm getting grounded. Keep the insects off of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is just all these beautiful benefits and one bottle was just so few drops to make and no, no contaminants, no fillers, none of that stuff that we read about. It's just natural and you can feel safe to use um, on your bodies and the people that you love because these would make beautiful gifts. Um, it says number four for optimum results, it's going on your sheet. Let the mixture sit for at least two to three days. And I put yes on this. It allows for the oils to fully mature. And when you're done, just apply to your wrist. So you just apply it to your wrist. Are there other places you can put it other than just your wrist? Where else could you? Well, you're, I would say any of your pulse points. So like, um, like inside of your elbows, inside of your knees, that's a pulse point, the back of your neck, on your chest. I don't have really <laughs> much, but you put it there. The other would be, well, I put a lot of the oils over my heart. Mm -hmm. So on your wrist, on inside of your elbow, inside the elbows, those are all your pulse points. So yeah, wherever you want to put them. Bottoms of your feet, but most people like to put it on your wrist and smell. So, oh, that does smell lovely, I will yeah. say. So that is how you would make that. And um, I wanted to show that with you. Now, in doing, showing you that, what I'm hoping to happen very soon, uh, hopefully going to offer this class in person so you can actually smell top notes and base notes and middle notes and base notes or uh, you know experience these pre-made beautiful oils and that class is also called essential perfumes 
and it comes with 10 different oils you can make um and you get I, i'll provide everything for you and you get stickers for your bottles and some of those are on here three of them are on here they're they're secret rebel mm, and urban so they have the matching perfumes and bottles and we would make one or two of the 10. so we might do that through our craft lab uh, we might do that in a class like this but i i will be letting you guys know uh, when that happens and i think in person would be best on that because you can actually experience the oils so we've got some lot of fun things coming and um, I know that green clean class we did recently, Chris was at on great. Zoom, and it would be great in person also. But we'll keep Zooming because you all know how to go out and learn and make these yourself. There are some safety tips I want to make sure you cover. The citrus oils like wild orange, they're photosensitive. So you don't want to expose yourself to the sun and go out you know, with these oils, because you, you will sunburn, you have a tendency to sunburn um, easier. So you want to 12 hours or put it under your clothing where you're not going to be exposed to sun. You're never to use the, the oils in, inside your ears, but like a pull, for your perfumes, you can use it, um, you know, behind your earlobes or right below your earlobes, but not inside the ears or inside the nose or other sensitive areas. And this is a really good tip. If you're using an essential oil and you have an irritation or a reaction of some sort, water and oils don't mix. So you would put the fractionated coconut oil on that until that totally subsided. So you put it on, if you still have the rash, put it back on the fractionated coconut oil with irritations, use that, a carrier oil. Um, you wanna use glass or stainless steel containers. Today I'm drinking my water and I have a drop of lemon oil in there and it's glass. So you wanna make sure because the oils will break down the plastics. Essential oils can do that. And also remember, you wanna keep these type of things out of the reach of children and pets. So we have two minutes um, and I just want to conclude with this. I just want to give my, truly my heartfelt thanks for you being here today. It means so much to me that you guys, you know, got on, took time for your day, picked up your packets on your sample bags. Remember, you can still get those till Friday. Um, but it's just, it just brings me joy to be able to share passions in my life, you know, um, and this is one of my passions. I just love sharing because I know how much they've helped me and helped my family and my loved ones. And um, so just, I enjoyed it, though I can't see you, I just enjoyed it. I felt your energy and spirit through the computer. So thank you for being here with me today. And I hope that you're inspired to go make your, get this, pure fit, pure fit, perfect, perfect uh, essential oil. One that's just for you, your unique one, because none of us are exactly the same. So it's kind of cool to be able to make our own unique smell, a custom sense. Um, and remember, they're great for guests. So you've been a sensational Zoom audience. Thank you for that. And if you're interested in learning more about these oils and what I use today or how to make your own, we can get together one-on-one -on -one by Zoom. I offer classes like this. If you want to do one of those, um, a class like this with your friends, I'm open to that. And in doing so, I will gift you a, a free perfume uh, roller bottle. So, Again, my information is attached on here. So if you are interested in, in learning more or uh, have a question about today, please reach out. I, I love, I love people reaching out and asking me questions. Uh, so that's it for me today. I appreciate you being here. And most of all, just know I'm, I'm here to help. I'm willing and I'm ready to serve in any way you may need. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed perfumes and I'll know when I you're out in the community. I'll see you at HEB and I'll go, she must have been at my class. Smell her. She smells great.
I'll have your perfumes on. Thank you guys. God bless and I uh, appreciate you being here today. Mommy? Thank, thank you so much for being here, Mary, and thank you, everybody. Bye. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, Mary. Welcome.